Hello. I wanted to do a quick demo for students who miss class on annotating texts and what that means in English 11. Okay, so we're looking at a newspaper article from the Houston Chronicle titled, If Dress Code Doesn't Suit Teens, School District Will. This is, although this is from 2008, um, with prom right around the corner, I think dress code is on most of our minds. So this looked like it might be an interesting article. But more than that, I just wanted you to see, again, how a reader processes a text with a pencil in their hand. Okay. So there is a subtitle. Parents say the inmate jumpsuit is too extreme for attire offense. Inmate. Hmm. Okay, that does seem extreme. So if you're doing symbols for your annotation, you might do something like this. But as you'll soon discover, a symbol or an underline or a highlight alone really doesn't give you any opportunity to th think on paper. And thinking on paper is sort of the intermediate step between reading and writing. And that's why we emphasize it in the English 11. All right, enough about that. Okay, so the author is Elizabeth White, and she's writing for the Associated Press, August 1, 2008. Okay, so we have a couple pieces of information we're going to need to know if we are doing any kind of analytical discussion or writing, and that is TAG. So again, TAG stands for title, author, and genre. Genre is just a fancy way of describing what the text type is. In this case, it's a newspaper article. Um, title is right here. If you're writing about a piece of writing, you always want to be able to properly format your title. You will always put that in quotes when referring to it. And you will use what we call title case, which means you will capitalize every relevant word in that title if you are writing about that title, just like I have done. Okay. And then the author is Elizabeth White. If you're referring to the author, the first time you use the full name, Second time, it is okay to refer to the author with just the last name. Okay. Gonzales, Texas. Hmm. Sounds like that might be near the border. Sounds like a multicultural town. Um, that might be relevant when we're talking about dress code. Right, because dress code, like any other cultural code, is specific to its culture. Um, what's appropriate in the school culture is a little bit more formal than what's appropriate when you're lounging around your bedroom with your friends. Okay, that's pretty obvious. Um, violating Gonzales High School's dress code is not a crime but some of the offenders are about to start looking a lot like convicts. Okay, so there's that shocking idea again. Convicts, convicts, inmate jumpsuit. Right now, this school district seems to be associating dress code violations with Criminality. That seems extreme. All right. Now, 
I hope what you start to recognize is this little thought process here that I'm noting in the margin. That is usable in any kind of analytical writing or speaking. Um, I can plug that right into my thesis statement. I could say author Elizabeth White in if dress codes don't if debt if sorry if dress code doesn't suit teen school district will comma published in the Houston Chronicle in August 2008 the author illustrates a school district that associates dress code violations with criminality comma an extreme by any standards, period. Bam, there's my thesis statement. All right, if you're not there yet, just know that by thinking in the margins, you are building your ability to analyze. And that is very important in English 11. Okay, soon after classes begin, August 25, violators of the district's beefed up dress code must don navy blue coveralls unless they get under, I'm sorry, unless they get another set of clothes from home or sort of in school suspension. Okay, so do you notice any common characteristics with the SC Scotland High School dress code. Well, you should because under our dress code you have two options. You can either put something else on or you can serve in school suspension. Um, now this district takes it a little further um, apparently they have navy blue coveralls or prison jumpsuits that the students have to put on. Um, obviously that's degrading and dehumanizing. Um, the outfits aren't just styled like prison jumpsuits. They're actually made by Texas inmates. So... Have you heard the term school-to-prison pipeline? Well, this kind of makes an ironic reversal of that. Anyway, um, so lots of crazy stuff happening in the first two paragraphs. Certainly plenty to comment on in the margins. Um, that is your modeling, and I would like you to continue for the rest of the article on your own. Um, we'll get together and see what you've done. Thanks.